Okay, before we start, I have something to announcement. And here, uh, next Tuesday, March 9th, March 9th, and we will have the first hour exam. And the time will be 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, I think that's right. Yeah, and this time is for the Easter time. So uh, at that time, um, please log in uh, the Zoom meeting. I will send the Zoom meeting link uh, before uh, Tuesday. Then you log in that meeting and then open your camera and mute your microphone. Then uh, if you have any question, you can type in the chat or um, just uh, open your microphone and uh, ask me. And I will stay with you for this whole uh, R exam. Then after that, um, you will have 15 minutes and to take a photo of your solutions and convert all the photo into one PDF file, then upload the PDF file in the, uh, the course site. And just like the, the quiz, right? um, the difference is the R exam take longer, um, but all the process uh, is, uh, is like the quiz. And um, the R exam will cover um, the chapter five, uh, chapter one to chapter five. The material will cover chapter one to five. Okay, we will have linear motion. That will be and use the four equations to determine displacement, time, initial velocity, final velocity and acceleration. So you need to review that four equations and um, get to familiar with them. And you can just take some notes on your equation sheet and uh, underline these four equations are very important. Okay, this is the first, first one. Okay, this is the first one. The second one um, will be uh, the projectile motion. Yeah, oh, motion. Okay, this is also very important, but we can separate the projectile motion into um, two linear motion in X direction, Y direction. Okay? And in the X direction, uh, acceleration is zero, so we have X equal to VT. And the Y direction, we have a constant acceleration. The acceleration is uh, minus 9.8 then we use um, the equation for linear motion to do the calculation for X component, the Y component separately, and you know, we can solve uh, the different parameters. Okay, the number three will be the circular motion. A circular motion um, is very important and we are going to figure out the centripetal force and how to use um, the linear velocity and angular velocity to determine the centripetal acceleration. Okay. Number four will be the free body diagram. The free body diagram, and we will ask you to draw um, all the force exerted on the object and separate the force uh, which is not on the axis, then you get the X component, the Y component, and use Newton's second law, Newton's second law, and free body diagram. Oh. Okay. To get the acceleration. Okay, that are uh, all the materials we will cover for this R exam. And if you have any questions, you can email me before the R exam or come to my office R on Thursday. So do you have any question? Okay, if there's no other question, I'm going to start today's topic.
Okay, today I'm going to talk about circular motion. Circular motion is a motion which the uh, trajectory is a circle. Um, if the project if the trajectory is a circle, then we have several parameters to describe this motion. The first one will be the radius of the circle. If we have a circle and we have object and the object could be anywhere, but and no matter where the object is, the radius of the circle is a constant. Radius of the circle R. So this is a constant, it doesn't change. Okay. The second one will be how long does it take the object to move in a wrong trip? So that is the period. The period describes the duration for the object uh, to move a circle. Um, if the speed is uniform, if the speed is uniform, then the period will be equal to the circumference divided by the speed, right? Circumference is two pi r divided by the speed. This is very important. Um, okay, so um, if the speed is a constant, we use this formula to, uh, to calculate the period. And also, we can also use the period to calculate the speed. Same thing. And the third one is the speed. Speed here is a scalar. If we want to talk about the, uh, the vector, we use velocity, right? So at any time, anywhere, if the object has a velocity, it includes the magnitude and the direction. The magnitude um, is equal to the change displacement over change time, right? That's the definition of the, of the speed. But for the direction, the direction is the tangential direction of the circle. So suppose if the, the circular motion is clockwise, then the speed or the velocity at this point will be like this. I draw a tangential line and the direction goes down, goes right down, and we have an arrow on the, on the V. So that's uh, the direction. Direction is tangential. Okay. And tangential direction. So you will find that in the circular motion, even though the speed is uniform, but the direction will change. The direction change all the time. That means if we calculate acceleration, the acceleration is not zero because velocity is not a constant. So here, the magnitude of velocity could be the constant, but the direction is not. So this is very important. In the circular motion, acceleration is not zero. And we were going to figure out how large the acceleration is. And the next one will be the angular velocity. This is a new parameter, and we don't have this parameter in the linear motion. We call it the angular velocity. So what does this mean? It means how long, uh, how fast for the object and to take the whole circle. It's similar as this, as a velocity, linear velocity, but um, they have different units. That means if the object move from one position to the other position with the angle of theta and take time of t, then the angular velocity is defined as theta over t. So that means uh, if we check the unit, the theta the unit of the angle, it doesn't have a unit. So we can use number one to represent the unit 
and the time has a unit of second. So the unit for the angular velocity is uh, s minus one or one over s, or we can use the radian over a second. So the dimension of the angular velocity is one over s. So very important. And we just use angle over time. For the linear velocity, we use displacement over time. But for the angular velocity, we use angle over time. And you can find that if the angular velocity is uniform, if omega is uniform, then we can calculate the angular velocity as the total uh, radian for a circle, that's two pi, uh, 360 degree, right? Over the period, over the period. So from this relation, we will get another relation that is a period could be equal to two pi, the total radian of a circle, divided by the angular velocity. Then if we compare with these two relations, we will get the velocity, linear velocity and angular velocity has a relation. That is linear velocity equal to the angular velocity multiplied by radius. Right. That's very important. And that means if we know the linear velocity, then we can get the angular velocity. If we know the angular velocity, we will get the linear velocity. Okay, so um, do you have any question? Then proceed. Um, the next one is acceleration. Acceleration, as I see, is another constant in the circular motion. If we have object, and object has a coordinate, that's x, okay. or we can use uh, y or we use r, that doesn't matter. This is just a notation. Okay. The displacement and hold on, there's a coordinate. Then the displacement will be from T1 to T2. If the object move to here, then the displacement will be like this. Okay. This is displacement. Then the speed will be the velocity will be the displacement divided by time. So if the displacement is very small, is very small, then the velocity will be the tangential direction. That's the speed. And how about the acceleration? If the speed of the velocity is here, and then the next time the velocity is here, then you will find that the direction of the speed change will go into the radius. That's the acceleration. So acceleration is towards the center of the circle. So this is the first summary. First one, acceleration. Um, point towards the center of the circle. This is the first, <clears throat> first result. The second one, the magnitude of acceleration. The magnitude of the acceleration is depend on the linear velocity. This one will be equal to the linear velocity square over the radius. Okay, this is very important. And we know the linear velocity is equal to angular velocity times r. So we can replace the linear velocity by using an angular velocity that will be omega r square over r, then we have omega squared times r. 
So you will find that if the velocity increase, then the acceleration will increase. And the power, the increasing trend is uh, quadruple, mm, quad, uh, the parabolic increase. And also we know the acceleration, the angular velocity has a relation with period as a two pi over t. So that means if the acceleration and we want to build a, a relation between the acceleration and the period, then the acceleration will be equal to 2 pi over t squared times r. So we have three relations, a as a function of linear velocity, acceleration as a function of angular velocity, and acceleration as a function of period. The third one, only apply for a uniform a uniform angular velocity so if omega is uniform if the angular velocity change over time we cannot use the third equation but the first two equation um, could be used in any case Okay, so that means if we have an acceleration, then we can use the acceleration to de determine the linear velocity or the angular velocity or the period. Then you might have a question, how do we determine the acceleration? According to Newton's second law, we have the net force equal to ma. So if we know the net force in the radial direction, then we will use the net force over the mass of the object and we get the acceleration for the circular motion. And because we know the acceleration, it's always points towards the center. So we call this acceleration as centripetal force, no centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration. And the force is called centripetal force. And we know the force is parallel to acceleration. So they are all point, pointing towards the center. Then let's figure out how to determine the centripetal force. I have a summary here. The step-by-step -step solve such problem is to figure out um, What's the plan of the circular motion? That's one figure out. The plan of circular motion. Does this circular motion occurs in the horizontal surface or a vertical surface? It depends on the circular motion is in the horizontal or in the vertical. So if the um, circular motion is in the horizontal surface, this is the 3D dimension, okay? The X, Y surface, then that means the centripetal force should towards the center and it will be inside of the X, Y plane. But if this uh, circular motion occurs in the uh, yz direction, yz plan, then <clears throat> the centripetal acceleration or centripetal force will be in the yz plan. So this is very important. And if we know the circular motion plan, then we're going to draw a free body diagram. Free body diagram will help us figure out the net force. And in the first case, if the circular motion in the horizontal plane, then the net force in the horizontal direction, for example, if the motion is in 
x y plane. That means uh, the net force in the horizontal surface or in the x direction or y direction the horizontal will be equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration. Okay. And in the vertical direction, the net force is zero. So in this direction, there's no motion. So in the vertical direction, the acceleration is zero, then there's no net force. And in the second case, if the motion is in the yz plane or xz plane, then in the horizontal direction, the net force is zero. Okay, but in the vertical direction, um, the uh, how to say that in the vertical direction, the acceleration is centripetal acceleration. Okay. Then the third one, we are going to uh, link the acceleration as a function of linear velocity, angular velocity, and period. We're going to use acceleration to solve the three parameters. Okay, so free body diagram first, then use free body diagram to determine the net force. Then use the net force to determine the centripetal acceleration. Then use centripetal acceleration to determine linear velocity, angular velocity, and period. This is a three step to solve such problem. Then let's do the practice. There is a swing and there's a person on the, on the seat. And the swing is in the horizontal uh, regular uh, circular motion. So that means uh, this circular motion occur in the horizontal. This is a trajectory. And we are going to find the time of one revolution of the swing. The time of one revolution of three swing is a period. So we want to know how long does it take the person to move in one circle. That's a period. Okay. To find the period, let's go back to step-by-step -step procedures. We need to know the centripetal acceleration. If we have the centripetal acceleration, then we are going to use the formula two pi over period square times the radius. Then we get the period if we know the acceleration. Okay, this is our step. But we don't know the acceleration. So we're going to use Newton's second law. Newton's second law. That um, the net force in the horizontal equal to ma. Because this motion is the horizontal surface, so I need to use the net force in the horizontal direction equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so um, let's figure out the net force in the horizontal. Mm, let's do a free body diagram. A free body diagram said um, we have weight and we have the tension on the swing. That's what we have only two force, no friction, no normal force. Okay, then let's define uh, the positive direction. This is x, this is y. Okay, then um, because the tension is not on the axis, so we have to separate the tension into the two axes. We get x component and the y component. And in the vertical direction, there's no motion, right? So acceleration is zero. So we have the net force in the y direction equal to Ty minus mg that's equal to zero. But in the horizontal, in the horizontal direction, we know the acceleration is a centripetal acceleration is two pi 
or a period this one so we have the net force in the x direction equal to tx equal to ma okay so let's figure out um, the tx and the ty we know this degree is 30 degree angle is 30 degrees so this is 30 degree so we have T, tx x component equal to ty times tangent 30 degree right because from the first equation we know the y component of the tension equal to the weight so we have weight times tangent 30 degree Okay, then if we have this relation, we can go to solve the acceleration by using the second equation. We have Tx, Tx is mg tangent 30 degree equal to ma. A is 2 pi over period square times radius. And you will find that the mass just cancel. Uh, hold on. Mass M A uh, M A okay then mass just a cancel so we can solve the T that will be uh, two pi square times R over G tangent thirty degrees let's do the calculation the calculation give us uh, how much is this? That will be six seconds. Okay, then part B, does the angle depend on the weight of the passenger for a given rate of the revolution? From this formula, we find that the period depends on the radius of the circle radius of the circle and the gravitational acceleration 9.8 and also the angle of the swing so the period doesn't depend on um, the weight that means no matter how we, uh, no matter how heavy the person is the period is a constant I mean, the period only depends on the geometry of the suite. It doesn't depend on the weight. Let me give a pause here. Do you have any question? Okay, let's move on. Um, there's a car and a truck. We know the weight and they just uh, go to make a turn and the curve has a radius of 225 meters. Um, at what angle should the highway engineer bend this curve so that vehicles traveling at 65 mile per hour can safely run, run it regardless of the condition of their tires? Regardless of the condition of their tires, what does this mean? Can anybody tell me what does this mean, regardless of the condition of their tires? There is no friction. And say it again? There's no friction. No friction? Okay, yeah. Um, if there's no friction, how can the car take a turn? For example, if we go to uh, a cross, and there's a car and the car want to take a turn so if there's no friction how can the car take a turn um the speed of the car change at the initial position the speed is move up and at the end the car has the speed that goes right so that means there should be an acceleration 
um, to change the speed. And we know uh, the weight and the normal force will not change the speed in the horizontal direction. So the only force can change the speed is the friction. So if the friction here goes in this way, is the friction, then the car will make a turn. But here, if we regardless of the friction, how can the car make a turn? This is um, uh, a question that you need to think about that. And actually, the, the engineer found the solution. He said, if we make the, the highway not flat, but with the angle uh, between the horizontal direction, for example, if this is uh, the road, if its a surface is flat, then the car here, and we draw free body diagram, the weight and the normal force are in the vertical direction. And in the horizontal direction, there's no, no force. In the horizontal, for example, this is y, this is x, x is zero. There's no force. So the car will never turn. But if we give an angle of the, of the surface, with a little bit tilt. With a bank and this angle and the car here. Then you will find that the weight is also in the vertical direction, doesn't change, but the normal force will have an angle between the weight. In this case, if we do the separation, you will find that because these two forces are not parallel, then the vertical component of the normal force is going to balance the weight. And the x component of the normal force will give this car a horizontal net force. Then the horizontal net force will provide a force to make a turn. So this is why we need the engineer to bank the highway and to give a, a acceleration for the car. Okay, so this is uh, um, the reason we need to bank the highway. Okay, then let's calculate the angle. So from this diagram, right here, from this diagram, we have the net force in the horizontal is Fx. And this will provide the force for centripetal motion. The circular motion will equal to Ma. And A here, it says we know the linear velocity. So this will be equal to M times V squared over R. This is a triple acceleration depend on the linear velocity. Then the question is, how can we figure out the horizontal component of the normal force? We know the angle between the bank slide and the horizontal direction. Then from the geometry, we will find that the theta is also equal to this one. These two angles are equivalent. So that means the y component of the normal force and the x component of the normal force has a relation. That is, this one over the y component is equal to tangent theta. So this is the first relation. The second one is in the vertical direction, the net force is zero. The net force is equal to ny minus mg. That's zero. Okay. So we can get the normal force in the x direction equal to ny times tangent theta because the ny equal to mg, so that's equal to mg tangent theta. And this is the net force in the x direction equal to m a square over r. And you can also find that the m also cancel. 
So we have uh, tangent theta equal to V squared over GR. V squared over GR. V is 65 mile per hour. G is 9.8 meter per second square. R is 225 meter. Then we get the angle. Then the angle will be, check the solution. No, 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 no. 21 degree. Okay. Hmm. Next question. Should the heavy truck go slower than the lead lighter car? The, the question is, does the linear velocity depend on the mass of the car? From this relation, we know the angle only depends on the velocity, acceleration, and the radius. It has nothing to do with the mass. So the answer is no. It doesn't depend on the mass. OK. So this is this problem. Do you have any question? How do we know that the angle of the incline is the same angle that we use for the normal force? Um, your question is, why this two angle equivalent, right? Yes. Uh, let's do some math. Is the inclined angle. This is the weight. This is normal force. And the normal force, and use a uh, line like this. And let's see. This angle and this angle, let me call this is R. Alpha plus theta equal to 90 degree, right? Because this is, is uh, perpendicular. The normal force is perpendicular to the surface. So alpha plus theta is 90 degree. And let me make this larger. And this angle and alpha, let me use this is beta. Alpha plus beta is also 90 degree because this is 90 degree in this triangle. Alpha plus beta equal to 90 degree. So that means beta equal to theta. This angle equal to this angle. Because beta also equal to this one, this is also beta, right? Because the uh, cross line is beta, this is also beta. So that means this angle equal to this angle. So we have this one equal to this one. Can you follow me? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, then next question. Um, I'm sitting on the edge of the horizontal disc, like a merry-go-round, and the radius is three meter, and the coefficient is 0.4. Then what's the minimum time for one revolution of the disc if you are not to slide off? So minimum time for one revolution is a period. We're looking for period. Then the next question is, does the weight matters? Okay, same question. Let's do this quick. We have a disc, and you're on the edge, and the center is here. Um, let's draw the free body diagram. If we look from looking this way, so this is top view. If we look looking this way and a front view. We will have a disc. You stand here. This is axis. 
Okay, let's draw the free body diagram. And we have weight, normal force, and friction. Okay, so can anybody tell me why the friction towards the center? Why the friction is in this way, not in this way? Anybody has an idea? Um, is it because if it slides off, it's gonna go to the right? Yeah, if, it... yeah, yeah. That if the person is in a circular motion, the tend for the person to slide is slide out. This is tend to slide off. Mm -hmm. So um, if we want to block the sliding, then we need a force to prevent the slide. So the force should go into the center. Okay, so let's figure out the friction we know is equal to coefficient times the normal force. And the normal force equal to weight. So that's mu mg, right? And the friction is only force in the horizontal direction that can provide the centripetal force. So this is equal to MA. A. Um, we're going to figure out the period. So we're going to use a formula, including a period. So that's M 2 pi over period square times R. Okay. So in this case, we will have the relation mu m g equal to m to pi t square r and the same thing the mass cancel so the period is equal to 2 pi square r over mu g uh hold up square root Okay, so um, you will find that the period doesn't depend on the mass. So it's independent to the mass. The question will be no. And the minimum time should be the same. So do you have any question? Okay, let me move on. This question is the circular motion in the vertical direction. Okay. Just now we talk about three problems. The three problems are in the horizontal motion, but this one is in the vertical. In the vertical, okay, let's do the free body diagram first. We know the mass of the car and we know the radius. And at the point B, the top point, we know the normal force. Then let's figure out the normal force when it goes down. Okay. The normal force at here should go down because the surface, the track is on the top and the tie is on the bottom. And because the tie compress the track, so the track will give a reaction force. The reaction force goes down. So the normal force goes down and the weight also goes down. So we have normal force and weight. And let's define the positive direction. So positive direction goes up. So the normal force is negative, weight is also negative, equal to uh, MA. Acceleration also point towards the center. It's going down, so A is negative. Okay, then we can remove the minus sign. There are too many minus sign here. So we have normal force plus weight equal to MA. This is at point B. Okay. And it also provides a condition that the travel is at a constant speed. Okay, constant speed, that means 
we know acceleration equal to v squared over r. So if it's a constant, the radius doesn't change. So the acceleration is constant. This is a constant. This is a constant. And let's figure out the point A. Point A, we are going to find, figure out the normal force. Let's do the free body diagram. It will be normal force goes up, weight goes down. So we have net force is N minus weight, right, equal to MA. A towards into the center. So that's going up. We have positive A with positive normal force, but negative weight. Since we know MA is a constant, so this one is a constant. This is a constant. So this one at point A, point A, this point B okay, is equal to normal force at point B plus weight. So the normal force at point A equal to the normal force at point B plus two weight. Normal force at point B is six and the normal force at the weight for this car, we know the mass at point eight, so the weight is eight plus two times eight. Uh, what's the value of this? Okay, do you have any question? Okay, uh, if you don't have uh, other questions, and I'm going to uh, stop this class. Well, in case you miss the first several minutes, I give you an announcement that is, um, we are going to have uh, hold on. We are going to have a, a meter next Tuesday, and four five uh, at four to five, four p.m. to five p.m. and I will send you a Zoom link at that time. Then you can log in the Zoom meeting and open your camera and mute your microphone. And I will stay with you for this whole exam. And then in case you have any question. Okay, so uh, if you don't have other questions, I will see you uh, this Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm.